Do it, Graham. I was just talking to a friend of yours. Who was that? Sir Alex Ferguson. Who? Sir Alex Ferguson. <laughs> Were you actually talking to Alex Ferguson? I just watched a documentary. There's there's a hundred documentaries out there now. Once upon a time, they weren't made so so easily. So you'd have to really dig. But I think this one was pretty good. What was that? I watched it. It was called uh, All or What the fuck was it called? Because <laughs> <laughs> now, like every single team makes a fucking documentary now, right? Like mm-hmm. All or Nothing, or whatever they are. It's like every single football team and i'm trying to educate myself because i know very little but because i'm traveling over there and because my son loves it my son loves my youngest son loves football I'm trying to learn yeah. more and more so i watched a really good documentary on your friend sir alex what's do you, are you a fan of his um i don't mind him he's a good guy he uh, seems to be at a high level so i don't really mind him he's not like in scotland like the football up here is terrible to be honest but um, it's either going to be usually Rangers or Celtic. That's who you'll support. What about Aberdeen? You don't really, I don't know anybody that supports Aberdeen. Wow. Maybe <laughs> that's who I'll support then. I, I feel like that's who I'm going to support then. I like to support the underdog. Um, yeah, there's a few underdogs. Well, Scotland as a country, you're underdogs. Exactly. Mm-hmm. You're kind of like – so in America – so I was born in Boston, and Boston mm-hmm. always feels like the little brother of New York <laughs> in sports uh, and in life. And in the last 20 years, the Patriots have been amazing and the Red Sox have been great. But for a long time, we were just shit and like the little – like just like the, we wanted to be bigger. And mm-hmm. New York was like, fuck off, Boston. So is that kind of what it's like for you guys? You're like the little cousin up there? Yeah. Yeah. When it's like when it's Scotland is England, like England are just like bigger and usually better. So that's kind of the way it is in Scotland. They're kind of like to the side. So who were your who were your Scottish heroes growing up then? Scottish heroes, um, as in football team or just in anything? General? Just in life, who did you who did you who were some of your heroes as a young man? Um, as a young man in Scotland, I don't know. I don't think I had a hero in Scotland. <laughs> okay, who are your heroes then? Who are your sporting heroes as a young man? Um, I always liked Fernando Torres. Like, I always looked up to Fernando Torres and thought, that's the guy. That okay. was, like, one of the heroes. When I, when I was into football and stuff like that, that was the guy that I kind of, like, I was most impressed by and I always wanted to kind of be like when I was younger. And what, what, what qualities did he have that you wanted to be like? It just had like the full kind of like I thought like the full team kind of bond like team player sort of guy and it had the skill. It just had kind of every asset that I looked at and thought that's a player. That's a really really good player. So what about non football? Did you have any? Um, non football. Did I? Probably did. But, um, but Meatloaf loved him. Um, Meatloaf <laughs> loved him. Loved about fifty cent. So it was kind of like a mixed, mixed kind of group here but i always like people who were like underdogs so see like 50 cent eminem that sort of thing like underdogs and they, they kind of made it i love right. that I, I gotta say meatloaf is a shocker i nah, know i just love this music i mean no i do too i listen my 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 sisters had the single okay do you know what a single is 45 uh-huh. mm-hmm. uh paradise by the dashboard light and i would listen to that all the time <laughs> um, and I didn't understand what it was about exactly, but it, it, it had all those like different levels. And then you had the baseball announcer. That's Phil Rizzuto, who's a Yankees sports announcer in, in at the end there, you get the baseball. Um, and then as I got older and I learned what the song was about, I liked it even more. So <laughs> that's just so random. I don't know if anybody's ever said, cause everybody knows meatloaf and there's songs that uh-huh. if they played it on the radio, they'd know them. Uh-huh. Um, uh, his his last hit was um, "Can't Do That," right? I I would do anything for love, but I can't do that. Like people would know that song, but I've never on a like a podcast ever heard anybody say like, "Oh yeah, Meatloaf's my guy." That's amazing. <laughs> just just a guy, and he's just a a good guy, a good singer, and he kind of brings up good music. Well, he did. Wow, uh, did you play sport in uh, in high school? Um, never serious. Never serious. I played like football, soccer, you would call it. 
Um, but nah, never, never at a serious level. I was always wanting to lift weights. I never really, I never really liked fitness. It was more weightlifting. So you're just in the gym, basically, just, did, just trying to get big. <laughs> yeah. Did you did you follow like powerlifters? Did you follow bodybuilding? So in that, in terms of that, like I, I liked um, I've always kind of looked up to like Steve Cook. I don't know if you know him. He's kind of like a fitness influencer, bodybuilder. Um, who else was a there was a few probably um michael hearn who else I'm trying to think if there was anybody for the uk i'm sure there was but i forgot their names because i've been that kind of out of source with bodybuilding and stuff like that for years now i forgot who's even who um ryan terry i'm sure he's from like the uk i don't know if you'd know him but he's completely shredded and i always used to look up to him and be like you want that's the physique you want so with stuff like that so i kind of went through phases probably like every single kind of human being you go through phases where you're like you're into football and then you're into something else and then you're into something else and you have different people you kind of look at and go i want to be like that so which high rocks was your first um my very first high rocks was manchester two manchester 22 mm -hmm. and did you sign up for pro Yep, signed up for pro. I think I came fourth overall, and no, sorry, fourth in my age group. I don't know where I placed overall. I think it may have been sixteenth uh, with a one oh nine. And thing. when you fi when you finished, was there a thought of, oh, okay, like this this could be something for me? As soon as I finished, I thought exactly that because I was like. I didn't, I didn't even like focus on this and I got a 109 and at times at that time the top guys were getting like one hour to maybe like one hour three so I was like I'm like a couple of minutes off these guys and I've just been lifting weights and then did the odd kind of 10k run <laughs> so I was like if I tried hard in this sport then I could probably do quite well did you start watching videos of like hunter and whoever else at that time mm -hmm. at that time i think it was like hunter ken um i'm sure jonathan Wim was breaking on sandy you know, so there was a couple other random guys that i've not really heard of like i don't think they're doing much now because the caliber's just getting so high um who else is there ronkovich i think he's always kind of been there as well um, but i always watched him and i was i was kind of mesmerized and like i was like i'm gonna be there I'm gonna be racing these guys. I'm gonna be beating these guys. <laughs> so how many how many weeks or months was between Manchester and London? Um, I don't know. Cannot remember. So this was so that was my second Tyrox. Probably I, I actually got worse when I went to London. That's what I was gonna ask you worse. about. You got you did a one twelve. I did a one twelve. So I went from a one oh nine to a one twelve, but. I placed third in my age group, so the placing was better, but the time was worse. So now that I look back and I understand that every course is so different, that wasn't necessarily like a bad race. Which but at I the time, was, did you? But at the time, were you disappointed, or you thought I was very disappointed? I, I walked off the stage, and you can see it in my photo that, like your your end photo, I was like, I was scunnered. I was just looking at the time, going, "How have I added four minutes to my time?" <laughs> but now when I look back and I go. The placing's a lot better, and there was so many more people competing at that time, right? Compared to Manchester, so that's interesting. So at that race, let's pull this up here. At that race, Sandy <coughs> won in, in an hour. Megita, mm -hmm. Megita, one hundred one two four. Tiago, one hundred two oh nine. Sebastian Iverson, one hundred three eighteen. Potter Bergsman, one hundred four fifty one. I haven't even heard of him. He must have been one of the guys that did it back then. And then Willie Humphreys, Frison, Alphonse, Nuno, Beretta, Santa. Yeah, like you're way down here. You're 15th. 15th? Yeah. Um, you beat JFit, though. Good job. Um, <laughs> so did you start to talk to those guys, though, around then? Were you, were you starting to nah, like see I was those? still kind of like a nobody at that point. Um, and I was just kind of like... I, I watched them, like I watched them on YouTube and stuff like that, and wherever I could kind of watch them. But nah, I never really in interacted. Like, 
in terms of the level that I'm at, like we're at now, where you can kind of like you chat to people, most people, because you're kind of in that same sort of circle. Doesn't mean like I don't know, like you're not at that level, but just once you get to the same sort of level, you kind of like you just chat, chat about training, chat about this and that. So your first really good race was Manchester 23. So a year later, 10207, and you won it. Uh -huh. So tell me what that was like crossing the finish line first, or were you because it was multiple heats? Um, like at that time, I thought I did win it anyway because I, I didn't realize like I did realize that there was other heats, but I just thought there won't be other heats that are going to be beating the first heat. And now I realize that obviously that can happen. But yes. at that time, I was like, I was happy because I was like, I've won it, I've won it. But I would have been gutted if like somebody else came behind me and took it because it was my first ever win. And did it, was that the hardest you'd ever worked? Was the, was, was, was there a plan of here's where I, here's where I need to get, here's where I need to get better. Cause like you said, you know, the courses change, right? Mm -hmm. Where, where was your biggest improvement between Ra Manchester 22 and Manchester 23? The, the easiest thing for me was like, I was strong enough. Um, so I just had to build like an engine. I just had to build an aerobic engine and get a little faster on the runs. That was it. That was the two main well, things. Well, you make like, it sound simple. How does how does a big build a bigger engine? How does how do I build a bigger engine? Just uh, literally, like, wherever you are, like, that's your starting point. So right. for me, I was, at a, I was at a stage where I was, like, weightlifting four to maybe six times a week. So I was doing two cardio sessions per week. So all I had to do was add on an extra two cardio sessions per week. So I was up to four. And then I literally just increased the, the time. I just kept it so simple. And that was it. <laughs> literally, that was it. I had one interval session, a longer kind of session, um, a hill run every week. And then, what was my last set? Like a high rocks compromise session. And that was it. That's what I did. And then I, out with that, I just weight trained. <laughs> What's a hill run? A hill run. Like in the hills, and the trails. <laughs> oh, hill run. <laughs> what did you say? I'm not taking the piss, I swear. I'm like trying to listen. I'm focusing really hard on your accent mm. and I'm not making fun of you. Okay. I'm probably one of the easiest to understand in Scotland. Are you kidding me? Probably. No, I'm not. No. Graham, if I wasn't looking right at your mouth this whole time, I would, it would be very hard for me to understand. I'm <laughs> telling you. You have a very strong accent. Who do you think has a stronger <laughs> accent than you? There's, there's lots of people. Have you met people from Dumfries? <laughs> from where? <laughs> Dumfries in Scotland. <laughs> Is that the very top? Well, it's kind of on the, on the borders because they speak so fast. But see, I found when Absolutely. I went, but see, I think I like Northerners better. I think when I just, I visited England most recently, I think, I think mm -hmm. I like Northerners better. The Northerners kind of are better. <laughs> right. <Sorry. laughs> nah, they're just, I kind of like, kind of just like, I suppose we're so close together, like a couple hours apart. Right. Kinda but like you're not, the same. but you're, you're, are you north of the wall though? Do you live north of the wall? Uh, well, we're we're off, yeah. Um, so I thought you said hell, like the opposite of heaven is hell. hell. <laughs> you said a hill run. Hell. Do you have one in your in your neighborhood? Do you drive to a local park? Where do you where do you do this work? It's a 20, 20 minute drive, and it's like it's not it's like an ideal hill because I like to do intervals up the hill, so it's like. 400 meters elevation gain so it's like it's not the biggest but it's it's like ideal for the type of training that i'm doing 20 minute drive so do you good. wear do you wear like weight or you just run up and down it so it works out we'll do like roughly anywhere between 18 to 26 kilometers um but we'll do like reps so it could be like it can change from like one block to the next but that the last block was like 20 sets of 200 meters uphill and then the next block was like five by threes uphill five by three minutes what we can change depends where you are do you do you have a day job yep in the gym i'm a coach oh okay that's what i that's what i was kind of getting at because it's a lot of time uh -huh. to work out there's a lot of time but i'm lucky enough that i own the gym and like i can work out kind of any time i want like i'll pick and choose my, my hours uh, what's the name of your gym? Elation. Elation Fitness Training. Oh, just like your Instagram. 
Yep. Elation Gym. That's it. Um, hey, let me pull this back up. I was looking at your your high rocks. So you win Manchester. You win Glasgow. I mean, you had to win Glasgow, right? That's like your home course. Had to. Uh, let's look at that one. So who were you were you extremely confident going into that one? I felt good going into that one. But again, I think that one was like one of those courses that was pretty fast at that time. Right. Because I went from like a 102 to like a 57. Yeah, 57, 53. Uh, Your next closest competitor was Tony. Whereas I've Rebel. run faster. 101 20. You, you, dude, you, you were you finished the wall balls probably before they were even in the wall balls. He I was know. a 101 20. I know. You just dominated. <laughs> just taking over. How did you feel after that one? Very good. Because that was the one that got me into the elite. Because at that time it was only you only needed one fast time. Whereas now you've got the two times and then working working out the average to get into the fifteen. Right. Which is still kind of it's all it's it's better, but it's still not the best way to do it, in my opinion. What would you like to see? I, I'd probably like to see like see like the top forty guys go to like the same course and race in the same course, because then you're gonna get like if you have that three to five times a year, and then maybe like the first three or whatever from there. I don't know, but then they would need to kind of like do away with the elite uh, the majors probably if they use that method. But it's probably more more fair when you when you think about it. If the well, top that would just guys, wouldn't that just be the majors? Those top forty guys yeah. race, mm -hmm. right? I suppose. Mm -hmm. I think I mean, we're, probably more fair. We're, we're definitely getting a lot closer to definitely right. But it's moving forward and it's moving in the right direction. So that's the positive part about it. So, of the elite fifteen, are you are you friendly with uh, some of the guys? I know a lot of the guys like kind of have paired up, done doubles. Mm -hmm. I'd say I'm quite friendly with like most of the guys, but the, there's a few guys that I'll keep in touch with, and that's pro that's probably Hunter, um, Kelly, Jonathan. Um, I speak to Dylan Scott quite a lot actually, and that's probably great the guy. Main guy. Great guy, Dylan Scott, right? He is a great guy. He is a great guy, and he's he's training volume is ridiculous, like ridiculous. <laughs> I don't know how he never gets injured. Crazy. I know you got to knock on wood for that. Well, he's a young man, right? That's part of it. Uh -huh, exactly. <clears throat> he's a good athlete as well. Good athlete. Very good. Um. So when I uh when I met you, it was God. Look at all these races. Was it Chicago twenty three? Is that when I met you? I think it was Washington. Or or was it DC? Mm -hmm. That's the first so time I spoke to you. I'm sure. Um, so DC, let me pull this up here. So that was, I, these races run together, man. I can't even remember. So it's one big race. Yeah. So that race, Dylan, Rich and Kent was where everybody's eyes were. And then you, that's, you went unbroken on the wall balls, right? Mm -hmm. I got was six. And that's when I went unbroken. Six, you were in unbroken. So, so Colin was in front of you too. Place. Colin, yep, it was five guys in front, and I was just like, "This is it." And you needed to finish first or second to get in, right? Yep. Well, first, second, or third. First, second, oh, for, or third. Right. Because Rich Ryan got his spot there. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Um, so during that race, were you? Were you worried or did you know, like, they're all, I can see them, they're right where I need to be when I get to the wall balls, this is going to happen? Um, like, see, after the sled pull, like, I felt like I had an extra bit to push. So I started pushing, then when I got to the rower, then I realized I had an extra bit again. Like, that's the first time in a race that that's probably happened, but I've got, like, two kind of second wins. Um, so I was like, and then after the, the no, during the row, I remember saying to the camera guy, the guy that, um, my mate, um, he was like, you've got this now? And I was like, no, I've got this. So that's, that was my words to him. Because so, I just, 
I just thought from the row onwards like that I could take the spot. Like first, uh, second or third. Dylan was off. Like the, nobody was catching Dylan that day. He was he was gone. Um, but I was like, I'm sure I can catch second or third here. And I was just from there. I just believed I could get it. Then did. Yeah, you were pretty happy, as I recall. I know. <laughs> the emotions got the best of me. I'm play. I'm pretty like just kind of laid back. So when people see me like that, I'm like, oh, he has got emotionally. He has got like feelings. <laughs> He's not a robot. <laughs> Very much. He's not. He's not a Scottish robot. Mm -hmm. You're so excited that you left your jersey. I know. Have you still got that? I still have it. You know, I gotta say the tank top is not a great look for me. So Same. I just don't. I just don't wear it. You know what I mean? Like I would mm -hmm. love to represent you and Scotland, um, but uh, but yeah, tank's not a great look for me. I'm I'm hairy up here, so it's just weird. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm either uh, yeah I'm I race in a shirt I'm not really a shirtless racer but even shirtless mm -hmm. I think I would look better than a tank top. <laughs> Sometimes it can just make you feel like see if they're too tight you just feel weird you just feel very weird. Right. It's like I, I like the oversize a little bit better. Right. So you still so I I said you want me to send it to you and you said I could keep it. Do you still want me to keep it? Like if you I can see you. It. Oh. So you I, and listen it. as a guy. As a guy invested in the sport, I sort of like to keep these kinds of things. Like uh -huh. I've been an OCR since 2012, and I have like people have given me their awards because they didn't want to fly with them. I have like a you know mm -hmm. women's first place award or other random stuff. And at some uh -huh. point, I'll set up a whole like museum. So you'll be in the museum at some point. Amazing. The museum of of fitness <laughs> racing. Amazing. Do you uh, do you call it fitness racing? What do you call it when you meet people? Um, there you go. Just call it high rocks, because that's <laughs> that's the only thing we kind of compete in. Just call it. Well, we could call it racing. Like if we're just speak, chatting about it freely, racing high rocks. That's it, really. You haven't. Um, you don't go to any like gym comps or anything. I did in the past, but I've kind of just stopped and made high rocks to feel focus. I would like to try Affex though, because like, I would just I'd probably used to be better at that because I was stronger. Right, and I had a good level of fitness, whereas now I think like it's probably like you need you like you kind of need that, and I've I've no nowhere near as strong as what I was to kind of like cause I'm sure it's like five rep maxes and stuff like that. Whereas now my five rep maxes are good in terms for high rocks, but when it comes to affix, they wouldn't even touch the guys. Like guys would be like, yeah, but they're not, but they're not, but they're not as fit. They can't. No, you, know, no, you, would, you would do good on the ergs, and they would, and they probably aren't as fast on the ergs. Uh -huh. but I'd like to try it. Either, um, either Listen, way, what are you doing December second and third? What are you doing? How far is it to get to Birmingham? Um, we have got a work night out. We have got a work night out. Run about that time. I'm sure it's. Is that the weekend or is that during during the week? Oh, yeah. Hang on, let's look it up here. That's the weekend. I'm sure we have a well, work night out. So there's no way I'd make Birmingham and then you come need back. To, you, you need to come down. Listen, I'm going to be there, okay? <laughs> December 6th through 8th. And they have that's, typically, it's a, that's, typically it's a doubles workout, but I think they're adding uh -huh. an individual day just to kind of mix it up. Very um, good. Lots of big, lots of big, uh, lots of big, uh, what do you call it? Crossfitters are going to be there. Uh huh. Do you follow anybody? BKG, Sarah Sigmund's daughter. Do you know these guys? I know who they are. Yep. Harry Lightfoot. Harry Lightfoot. Do you know him? Nah. I assume he's English. Uh, Maybe he's uh, not, but I bet he is. But CrossFit was what I watched. Like even the last few years, CrossFit was like the sport, and now it's just high rocks. I've still yeah. dabbled in CrossFit, but the workouts are just getting crazy. Crazy. Yeah, I think that's that's the that's the problem for them is that mm -hmm. it's like we've done everything, so now let's just get make it harder. Mm -hmm. The basics always win, in my opinion. Just go back to basics, like the foundations. So, should we talk about your niece race? If you want, <laughs> well, we can leave that. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, man, we got to talk about the good and the bad, my friend. Uh -huh. That's true. That's true. Uh, so let's pull this up here. Nice, 2024. 
singles. So 59 27, mm-hmm. which I want to say what's more important is who beat you, right? Because like mm-hmm. 59 27 is not a horrible race. However, Ronco, Sandback, Kelly, top three in the world, right? Yeah. Paleo, Hunter, Toby, and then you. Uh-huh. So, I mean, you're in that mix, right? Like anybody, mm-hmm. if that was, if that you ran that race again, you could be anywhere between fourth and eighth. What do you need to do to get to these top, top guys? Do you think Alex, Sandy, and, and JK? And let's throw Hunter in there. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I'm doing a lot of stuff that's focused on like, um, lactate testing. I don't know if you've heard of that before. I'm kind of new to it myself. But lactate like threshold, you mean? Lactate threshold testing. So basically, where you find like your threshold one, then your threshold two. So, I, I what I've found out about myself is I've been training far too fast. Like all of my interval training sessions have been just I've just been running far too fast. Like I'm talking like twenty seconds faster than what I actually should be running, which is a lot. Whereas I've not really spent any time in the proper threshold where I should be. So say, let's say it's roughly around about a 3.30ish pace right now. Like, I've always missed that. So I went too fast. I went too slow. So I've never spent much time in this actual threshold. So I think over the last, like, four months, I've started working in that threshold. So I'm hoping that's going to have a good transfer over. And I've been working towards building, like, a bigger base. Just, like, a lot of zone two and zone three. I think a lot of people miss out in the zone three, but I think zone three is literally like it's got a big part to play. Sorry, somebody just passing the gym. It's got a big part to play when it comes to high rocks because, like, I was thinking about it today, right? So I ran 18k at zone three, and then when I tested my bloods after it, I was sitting roughly at like two point, I think it was 2.2 millimoles per litre, um, which is roughly around about zone two to high zone, like zone three, I'm sure. Um, so when I was thinking about that, I was like, this is, this is a, probably a stimulus, what people call the gray zone, right? Like a training zone. This is what people call the gray zone, which in terms of people trying to stay away from it. But when I was running, I was like, when I'm in this zone, I can actually focus on as a non kind of good runner. I can focus on getting, getting a better stride, focus on my posture, focus on my breathing. And that's why I'm kind of gearing towards zone three as well. But I, and I think a lot of people can take take away from that do you have a laboratory do you have a laboratory in the back of your gym (laughs) nah it's basically in my bag (laughs) i just have this lactate threshold um, monitor well no this is i I was i was half joking so because there's a lot of companies out there now right Mm -hmm. they want to test your blood they want to test your fucking sperm that's like oh we give you this we give you that so i i want to learn what are you using is it is it is it a product that that is it a sponsor? Like, let's talk about what you're using. Nah, I just bought it by myself. Like, what's, um, it, what's it called? It's like it's Lactate Pro Two. It's a Lactate Pro Two measurement. I can okay. show you. I'm sure I've got it in this bag here. Oh shit! Do you have a built for athletes bag? That's my built for athletes bag. Of course, of course. I just got my first one. Did you? I actually got two, I had to brag, but they sent me a one to work with with, with my laptop and then like a regular one. And uh-huh. they're fucking huge. There's so much like I, I could I could literally travel and I'm an overpacker, but I think not going to England, but if I go like to let's say Chicago High Rocks, I think I could just bring that and be okay. Yeah. Oh, definitely. In fact, I've been on there. And I'm not just saying that. I'm I work with built for athletes, so but I, they're they're like I probably shouldn't say. Do you got an affiliate code? Do you got a code? EFT fifteen. No, no, no. We're gonna use, we're gonna use my code. I was just asking if you had a code. I'm yeah. not giving out your code. Oh, this is it here, right? So, lactate. Can you see that? Lactate Pro Two. Okay. So, By Arc Ray. Let's look that up. Um, I think it's like four hundred to five hundred pounds to buy. Um, so I bought it four months ago. By the way, you're talking about pounds and meters. You know, my audience is 70% American, so you have to we have to do some conversions. I'm 30% United So in Kingdom. dollars, that's probably going to be like 600 to maybe 650, $700. All right. Well, they're an American company, so that's good news. There you go. So probably cheaper over here. Maybe. 
Uh, they are in Minnesota. Whoa. Diabe- diabetes management, oral wellness, events and gout. Look at all this stuff. Whoa. Look at this. This is crazy. You can learn a lot. You can learn a lot. That's where I'm at. Like, I'm just, I'm just learning this by myself. How old are you? Have, I'm 30, but I don't really have anybody telling me what to do. I'm just kind of reading the science behind it and learning as I go. So I'm basically like a testing rat for myself <laughs> and my clients. But I think I think that's a good way to be. I mean, I think that is a good way to be. Uh, you know, we you know we call that just like ignorance on fire. You don't know what you don't know. You're just figuring it all out and just fucking uh-huh. crushing it, which I really like. Right. Mm-hmm. But I want to get the machines. Why is this? Why is this showing me? What is, that is it? Showing? Which which one is this? Glu- blood glucose meters and test nah, strips. It's, it's a lactate monitor. Okay, hang on. Tape it. But that is the company. Pro two. Is that what you got? Yep. See the one at the oh. side? Okay. Lactate Pro 2 monitor. Okay, hang on. This is the EU, the website. This is not what I want. See that? God damn it. Did it again. Hang on. Sorry. We're going to find this okay. thing. The Lactate Pro 2. That's the website I got it off. What's that? This one right here? Yep. It's... uh. 289 pounds to 359 pounds. Do you need the strips? What do the strips do? You definitely need the strips because the first time I did it, I made a lot of mistakes. So that's basically when you take your blood, you pop the strip in, you can see it there. Pop the strip in. Then it will come up a blood sign on the screen to tell you like if it's ready to take your blood. So you take it. I, I like to use my ears because that that's the mistake that I made, right? So when I was testing the blood on my fingers, like my, my fingers are always cold. Here in Scotland, it is always <laughs> cold, right? So there was never any blood coming out my fingers. So I read a bit more, and then I just started taking it through my ears. And I, be- I got better readings through my ears. Okay, this is sold out. It's, they're quite tough to get. 521 American dollars out of stock. Mm-hmm. Quite tough to Interesting. get. Interesting. So here's Have a... Ever- here's. Go ahead. Sorry. Have you ever heard of Jakob Engerbetsen, the runner? Uh, are you speaking English? That's not a person. <laughs> That's a person. What's his name? It's built like Jacob, but I'm sure it's pronounced Jakob. Um, you've got to have heard of him, surely. He's like the best like 1,500 meter, 5K runner. I have no idea what you're saying. Hang on. Jakob. So spell What's his last sure name? J. What's that? What's the last name? Inge Brits. As soon as you put in I N, his name will come up. I N or E N? I N. Jakob Ingebrigtsen, Norwegian. Nice. He's young. Yeah, he's handsome. He's 24 <laughs> years old. He's a Norwegian middle and long distance runner. Current world record holder in short track 1500 meters. So I was watching his YouTube stuff. Okay. And uh, six time European gold medalist. Sorry, go ahead. Sorry, I'm just saying that's what I've seen he was using this machine. So that's how I just thought. If this guy's using it, I'm using it. Rookie mistakes, but it seems to be seems to be working. He won gold in the fifteen hundred at mm-hmm. Tokyo and in in the five K at twenty four Paris. Yeah, he's very young. He's, he's six foot one. How tall are you? <laughs> I'm six foot. And what do you weigh right now? And now I'm 85 kilograms. What is that? In pounds? I don't know. I know how, it, how many stone is it? That's how I weigh myself. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I just walk in kilograms. Hey, Siri, how much stone is 85 pounds? Oh, shit. 85 kilograms. Hey, Siri, how many stones is 85 uh-huh. kilos? Stones. Hey Siri, how many pounds is 85 kilograms? It's 187.39 pounds. Oh, you're all muscle, dude. Six feet 187? <laughs> That's phenomenal. Because I weigh 187 <laughs> and I'm 5'11, but I'm carrying a few extra pounds right now of uh of lasagna and meatloaf. 
What was that? that? See how I brought that back around? Um, (laughs) The problem is when I say that onto my phone, when I'm listening into my car, it it says it does it again. Because if Mm. I say, hey, Siri, my phone hears it. See what I'm saying? Uh, it won't work on your phone if you have a newer phone because it won't recognize your voice, but it's my voice, so it recognizes me. So I go on an endless loop while I'm listening to podcasts. Where did you go? Sorry. By the way, you. some of your friends who are listening to this who are like, who the fuck is that guy and why can't he stay focused? That's just how my show goes. Just so you just so they oh, know. Can you see comments? Oh no, this is a lie. This is just me and you. All right. All right. Yeah. It's just me and you. Um, but uh I'm an acquired taste for some, Graham. What's that? An acquired taste, like you know, the yeah, only, no, you might not like well, you, you. might not like me off the bat, but then eventually it's like, oh, I like that guy. Oh, you're an acquired taste. I'm oh. an acquired taste. Yes, the <laughs> podcast. Yes. <laughs> no, I get you. Uh, what do you like to eat after a race? After a race, basics: pizza, pasta. It's something kind of just fast. Pizza and pasta. It's usually you, nine times out of ten, it's always pizza and a beer. Did you, did you reward yourself after uh, after DC <clears throat> with a pint? Mm, I don't know if I after DC. I don't know where we went. Probably did though. Because when, I'm, I, when, mean, the Scot- when I was the Scots in, know how to go ahead. When I was in Vienna, I said to them, we sat down and I placed fifth. We sat down, there was our mates and that there, Hannah was there, and I was like, I promise you, I'm going to be um, podium in DC. And then when I went there, so then I did podium, so I can imagine I had a beer after. I don't know, I cannot remember. The Scots, you know how to drink, right? Yep, usually. You, know, you know how to put them away. Uh-huh. Those times it's are behind national, me. Behind me now. Me, me too. Me too. <laughs> I, I, I stopped drinking when I was 27, actually. Yeah. I've not stopped completely, but I'll have a few. But the way we used to drink was just different to what it is now. Now it's just focused on training, whereas before, <laughs> it's crazy. So we were talking about that world championship race, and we, we, we kind of skipped ahead. We were talking about what you've learned <laughs> to do. But I guess my question is, if you watch – if you're friends with all those guys and you're just watching online and seeing, when did you learn? When did you, re- was it after that race that you're just like, okay, I got to change something. And then you realized you were training too fast. It was literally after that race because like, so see, see when you do like a VO2 max kind of block, like I'll usually like, that's where you're working like your high end, your upper zone. But I feel like I spent far too much time in that zone and not enough time in the zone where I'll actually be racing. Because you're roughly going to be racing in zone four, roughly, for most people. And that's if you're wearing a proper chest strap. You can be zone five, right? And people can say, like, the heart rate was, like, 240 beats per minute and whatever. But it probably wasn't unless you're actually wearing, like, a, a chest monitor. But um, nine out of ten people are probably zone four and on zone five kind of jump in and out of both zones. So that's where you kind of probably want to be in your training but I just I just done I just moved far too fast in training and it did not translate over to the race so Whereas, do you think do you think that's only at your like elite elite level or did you start coaching people that way as well um like I think for uh, it's hard to say because I didn't coach people the same way I like I would just coach myself like I would just I'd individualize it for them like based on what I thought they need like most people come to me like as like I'm not really that good at running, but they come to me because I've seen how good that I've kind of got my run to just by myself. So they kind of like that. So it wasn't it wasn't an overall philosophy change. Nah, nah, I wouldn't like try and just put everybody on that the same sort of plan. Like I, I think you always kind of like as a coach, you need to individualize it based on like feedback from your clients so rather than having like for me rather than having one kind of check in every week i'll just say to my clients message me let me know how you feel after this session after that session and then we'll just interact throughout the week and that's the way i like to do it it's kind of more laid back but at the same time it's kind of more structured in a sense (laughs) does that make sense it's more laid back and it's more structured in a sense 
Because other like you can have one day a week where you check in with a normal coach, right? But whereas that when people start with me, I'll say just check in at any point. At any point. But even well, some that guys mean some guys get back like that. But but some guys might just over text you, text you like crazy. Most people don't over text me. And then I, I think people get it with me because I won't reply. You've probably seen this. I don't reply for like sometimes maybe ten hours. <laughs> <laughs> so so if people over text me, they can just sit there. If people really, really need me, what I say to my clients is phone me because I'm not a texting sort of guy. Just phone me. <laughs> <laughs> How long did it take? <laughs> now I'm looking at my responses and one of them says, uh, you sound more like Tom Hogan than me because I did a video, remember, where I was wearing your shirt? Uh-huh. <laughs> you said you sound more like Tom Hogan than me. And then I said, I just went with it one take. Um, and then, yes, it took us three days to try to get this conversation happening. So, but that's fine. That's, that's, I, I, you have good boundaries. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to start calling you though. You're better off. Better off. Um, all right. Well, listen, I think that's a good place to cut for now. Um, mm -hmm. so I, real quickly, I'm looking at your, it says built for athletes, Puma UK, my protein. Are these are you sponsored by all these or are these just like uh -huh. affiliates? Like are you like legit sponsored athlete? Like what's I'm trying I'm, to find out like as this thing's going on. I'm sponsored by them. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pretty good. Yeah, because that's part of the how we know our sport is growing is when you have a real mm -hmm. ecosystem. And so that's why I was asking. Like as uh -huh. as legit athletes, as legit sponsors come in. And it's not just, hey, my local gym is throwing me a, a bone, but like, uh -huh. you know, like these are real brands. Uh, it is Puma UK, though. I don't want to hurt your feelings, but it is, uh -huh. it is Puma UK. <laughs> just UK. But that's, that's still, it's still, it's still super solid, though. I'm just, I'm half uh -huh. kidding. But that's the thing. Like, see, like, to have people notice that your hard work is like going, it's getting noticed. Like, it's, it's good to see that. Right. Like, but there's still, like, see, as at this level, um, there's still like, there's still room to improve for these like these companies coming in because they're still paying influencers probably more than what they're paying the top end athletes, which is a shame, <laughs> in my opinion. Say that again. Like these companies are paying like influencers, like just random influencers, probably more. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't hear what you say. Influencers. What, what, yeah, it yeah. it doesn't make any sense because uh -huh. like even for me. Right. I have an account, Obstacle Racing Media. We mm -hmm. have 43K followers, right? Which isn't a million, but it's something, it's right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they'll pay some influencer with 18K, but they won't spend money on advertising with me, even though my reach might be bigger and feel less influencer -y. It'll feel more uh -huh. real. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, uh, but before I let you go, we should talk shoes if you're a Puma athlete, though, right? Mm hmm. So what what are you wearing? What do you what do you train in? What do you race in? What do you like? So same again. See, like over the last kind of four to six months, everything's kind of changed. But I've stopped training in a carbon plate. Like I've just focused on like a, just an everyday runner. So it's just I actually don't know what these are called, but they're just pumas <laughs> without a carbon plate. I don't really fuss too much about trainers as long as they feel comfy and like. I don't like when I run, I get inversions, so I kind of dip in like that. You've probably seen it when I'm running. Um, I so I, that, like get, I believe we call that pronation. Pronation. So I like to get like a trainer that, that helps like stop that. So you can go to probably any local running um, shop and kind of get a trainer for that. But um, these are comfy enough, so I use them. But when I'm racing, I'll race in the Elite Threes. They are the best shoes that Puma have brought out. And I'm not just saying that, like they are. They've got good grip and the like for me especially, like they just have like a good bit of stack. And I like the stack when I'm running, so it gives you that that, that pulse kind of forward. I love that. I need that. As a as someday it won't run as fast as the other guys, I need that pulse. <laughs> can you take your shoe off and we can look at see what name it is? Because now I'm very curious. I just ran in these ran 18k, so they're a bit dirty. Give me two seconds. You ran 18K. What is that? 10 miles? Um, what's 18K? Is 18K 16? Uh, 16K is 10 miles. Okay, look on the back. See what it says. 
Um, it just says Puma Nitro. Look on the inside. I don't really know what name it is. <laughs> it's fine. Okay. That's all they have. All right. Puma Nitros. But Puma do this thing, right? What they call every shoe the same name or almost the same. It's like so identical. So it's hard to find out. Like they brought out the Deviate Freeze and then the Elite Freeze, but they look they look the exact same. But there is a difference. So you've got the Deviates. They're good so probably for High Rocks as well. And they are the, like the cheaper option. But the Elite Freeze are, in my opinion, the best, the better option. All right. Well, if people want to learn more about you, where should they <laughs> follow you, Graham? Um, Instagram is probably the best bet because that's where I'll be posting most. And it's just Graham Halliday. And I do have YouTube, but I've kind of put that to the back right now. But I'm going to get back on it. And it's what about your Halliday mate? Again. What about your mate? You flew over and paid him to make your DC video. He's that's no more. And um, we're still working. No, we're still working together. It's just we're trying to focus on Instagram first. Um, we're trying to blow that up, and then we'll move back to YouTube. Okay. We'll see how it goes. All right, I'm going to take you off.